Einstein at go go. E is equal to M C square, in which energy is first equal to mass multiplied with the square of the velocity of light, showed that very small amount of mass may be converted into a very large amount of energy. If you could put a split atom together again by taking a brief trip backwards in time, you might find yourself tempted to do so. There's a large blackboard in an Oxford museum which was once used by Albert Einstein in 1931 and is still covered by rows of his chalk hieroglyphs. All the marks that Einstein made have been preserved. Letters and figures denoting energy, mass, time and speed and how Einstein thought they all might be interacting. mc square, in which energy is first equal to mass multiplied with the square of the velocity of light, showed that very small amount of mass may be converted into a very large amount of energy. In his equation, E equals mc squared, Einstein predicted that vast forces could be released if matter could be converted into energy. To be explored, he suggested, by studying radioactive elements. But when you come to learn where Einstein's calculations have taken the world, the sudden whim arises of wiping off each of his spidery formulae with an old rag while airily whispering, Bye bye, blackboard. For the slender scribbles made by this pure scientist, ritually known as the cleverest man in the world, would lead directly to man's first atomic explosion. Albert Einstein had proposed extremely powerful bombs of a new type to President Roosevelt and urged him in a letter to acquire uranium. His letter would instigate the Manhattan Project and nuclear weapons. It would lead to the deadly shrouds of radioactive clouds mutating man's chromosomes, to the cosmocratic delusions of madmen dying to blow the world to pieces, and to that unmentionable elephant in humanity's front room, the nuclear holocaust. Einstein can't be classed as witless. Claimed atoms were the littlest When you did a bit of splitting in this Frighten everybody shitless And I've been some clever bastards Probably got help from them Later Einstein would regret his letter and try to advise world leaders with an impotent desperation against the development of the bomb he'd spawned. To warn against their harnessing huge, uncontrollable forces, against their sparking off fission's furious chain reaction and releasing radioactive whirlwinds. But too late, for making threats are the politicians stock in trade. They're being perpetually charged with finding ever more aggressive toys. Thus, through Einstein's mushroom cloud, the world lost its potential Buddhahood. Ironically, it's being a poisoned mushroom that killed the Buddha. Studying the Oxford blackboard invokes the unsettling sound of Einstein's fingers scraping a white chalk across its surface, prompting the sly fancy to silence history with a nifty wipe. Though some might think it pointless vandalism, Others wouldn't care. If, through wiping the slate clean, the end of the world might be restored to being merely some religious fable rather than a real scenario. But clocks can't be turned back. Things can't be uninvented, rational scientists insist. While overlooking those particles which can go backwards in time, such as muons 
and tachyons, and which could, for all anyone may ever measure, be even cleverer than Einstein, whose own brain, just like his encroached upon atoms, would itself end up being split, reduced to laboratory scraps for students to gawp at in quasi-religious awe, oblivious to their own brains harbouring deadly traces of nuclear detonations. Fatefully, Einstein's brain, an object of adulation while he lived, would be ignominiously pilfered at his death by a pathologist, Thomas Stoltz Harvey, who'd keep it in his garage in Lawrence, Kansas. Harvey sliced up the brain into 270 pieces. One piece would even serve as a Christmas present for a mortuary colleague. Dead tissue in a bottle of formaldehyde, gift-wrapped. Some slices were even sold. Likewise, in 1955, Einstein's eyeballs were also taken by someone seeing their potential. Dr. Henry Abrams, his ophthalmologist, removed them during Einstein's autopsy. And some years later, Dr. Abrams was reported by Reuters to be looking for a buyer. After keeping Einstein's eyes hidden in a bank vault in Lovelady's, New Jersey, Abrams would bring them into the light of day with a high-powered sales pitch. When you look into Einstein's eyes, he gushed, you're looking into the beauties and mysteries of the world. By contrast, the bomb's maker, J. Robert Oppenheimer, stared into the ferocious eye of their atomic firestorm, and, seeing a hideous enormity whose properties were no mystery, commented on what they'd both created with a stark quote. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that, one way or another. The chain reaction stemming from Einstein's chalk marks would be felt by a blind girl some 120 miles away. Ken Bainbridge, the atomic test director, would tell the Los Alamos team, Now are all sons of bitches. And later Oppenheimer would decry the workings of his mentor's mind as largely cuckoo. Einstein's carcass would be teased apart by body snatchers, and Oppenheimer's son would live in deranged isolation next to the Los Alamos test site, while Oppenheimer's daughter would kill herself. His nuclear family exploded. The world's reason has been destabilized by Einstein's bomb. Yet the world's archetypes stay the same. Prometheus steals fire from the gods only for an angry Zeus to chain him shivering to a rock, plunging him into a state of unending fear that an eagle would tear out his organs with its vengeful talons. Lucky Venus, lucky Venus. Then I've been some clever bastards. Lucky Venus, lucky Venus. Then I've been some clever bastards.